I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about the latest JavaScript projects and some JavaScript books, the new Firefox beta, and our app review of the week is Moom. Let's check it out. The first project that we're going to be talking about this week is something called Holder.js. Holder.js is a piece of JavaScript that does image placeholders for your website. The way it works is you give it an image tag, and for the source, you specify the path to Holder.js. Add a slash, and then specify the width and height that you want the placeholder image. This is going to be very, very useful when developing sites, and you maybe don't have all of the images that you're going to be using in the final product. But you could say something like, OK, an ad's going to be here, it's going to be this size, and it will flow right into your content without really any work on your part. There's some great examples of the site of all different size placeholder images, and you can see right here, it's very, very easy to use with this image tag. Just drop in the source and the path, and you are good to go. This weighs in at only 5 kilobytes, so not really too much to put into your site, especially if you're only showing it to a few people, since this really is something that you're only going to be using in development of a new site. That's really, really cool. See, I always like to develop in the browser with HTML and CSS, so that makes it a lot easier to just drop in a placeholder image instead of trying to like box it out with a you know full color div that looks really ugly. So yeah, and especially when the cat placeholders aren't are taking too long to load. That's that's true. Those cat placeholders every time always a big concern. All right. Next up is Picture Fill, which is a piece of JavaScript that will allow you to make your responsive web images load a lot more quickly. Basically, it mimics the proposed picture element and it uses divs instead of the picture element just for the sake of safety and cross browser compatibility. So if I go ahead and click here on their GitHub page, we have a little example here. And I can show you a demo of how this works. When I resize my web browser here, it will go ahead and load in different images based on the size of the browser. Hey, there's Mike the Frog. Hi, Mike. Hey, look at that. Now, this is handy because you don't want to load in a really huge image if all you really need is a small image for like an iPhone or an iPad or something like that. That's something especially that you'll have to take into account on mobile connections. That's right. This is also similar to a project we talked about in the last episode of the Treehouse Show. However, it uses divs instead of the figure and picture elements. That's right. Uh, next up is a website called whatthekey.com. I'm sorry, whatthekeycode.com. If you've ever gone and developed an app in JavaScript, occasionally you will need to listen for a key code event. Uh, this can be a bit difficult to go through and look up the key code every time, so you can just go to whatthekeycode.com, type any key, and it will immediately give you the JavaScript key code. If you take a look at it here, I'm going to just go press some keys, and you can see as I am pressing them, on the site, it is displaying the different numbers. That's pretty handy. It is, and that's whatthekeycode.com, in case you forget. Got it. Memorized. Wait, what was that again? Whatthekeycode.com. OK, I got it this time. Next up is normalize.css at nicolas.github.com slash normalize.css. I think that's how you pronounce it. Good enough. Basically, when you're coding websites, you need to drop in some reset CSS. Reset CSS will remove the default styling that the browser applies, and it will remove all that default padding and margin, and basically create a level playing field so that it's easier to code your websites across different browsers. So after you drop in your reset CSS, you can go ahead and apply your own styling on top of that. Normalize is interesting because it's a modern HTML5 ready alternative to CSS resets. So basically, there's been a lot of CSS resets in the past, and this is just the latest and greatest one. This is the reset of the future. That's right. Present. The present future of past resets. Tomorrow is today. Well, I think that is a, is a great time to segue to our app review of the week. Let's check it out.
This week, the app we're going to be taking a look at is called Moom by ManyTrix, and you can get that at manytrix.com slash moom. So what does Moom do? This is something that has turned out to be an invaluable app for me. This is an OS X application where uh, you see this little see this little zoom button on the top left? It gives you a menu right there. Below that menu is a few buttons and a grid. What this lets you do is you can draw on this grid and it will resize the topmost window to be the size of that grid. You can also take it to full screen. Uh, and this is very useful if you've got something like a text editor and you know a markdown editor side by side. You can go ahead, click in there. It's got predefined sizes, or you can define your own. Uh, one thing that's really, really useful about Moom is that you can even assign custom key codes to the different sizes and have it apply to different applications. Myself, when I'm coding a site using you know, Rails, I've got a terminal open, text editor, and a browser. And with one keystroke, you can have these all resized to your preferred dimensions and layout. Uh, like I said, this can be extremely useful when going from you know, a laptop with an external monitor back and forth between the laptop, save you the time of resizing all these things. Uh, this is not a uh, sponsored review of the show. This is just something that I find invaluable. Shame on them. Shame on them indeed. You know, that's really interesting because one of the very few features from Windows, particularly Windows 7, that I really like is that you can drag windows to the, the left and right of the screen, or I think you can like drag them to the top or something like that, and it will make them go full screen or take up one side of the screen or the other so you can look at things side by side. But uh, that brings this functionality to... Uh, oh, this does that too. I didn't even mention it. Brings it to Mac OS X, so yeah. that's, uh, that's pretty nifty. Next up is HTML5 Boilerplate. And uh, speaking of CSS reset code, this is actually kind of the the ultimate reset in a way. It's basically some HTML, some CSS, and a few other things that will give you a good solid foundation for building an HTML5 future ready website. Now this is this is brand new, right? It's not brand new, Jason. I'm so glad you mentioned that. This is actually the 4.0 version. But if you haven't checked out Boilerplate before, you should definitely take a look. It's available at html5boilerplate.com. And in version 4.0, look at that. They're using normalize.css, a modern HTML5 ready alternative to <laughs> CSS resets, which we just discussed. It also includes the latest versions of jQuery and Modernizer, and it loads them in via Google CDN. So you know that it's going to be super duper fast and super reliable. So if you're starting a new web project, Boilerplate is a pretty good way to go. And then you can go ahead and drop in your other features on top of that. Nice. Uh, so next up, Firefox Beta 16, Firefox 16 Beta 1 has just recently been released. Something that's really useful for developers in this version is a new console that lets, that's going to let you have a command line interface to Firefox itself. What can you do with that? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can go through and actually control different parts of the browser experience. You can manipulate the showing of the inspector. Um, so you can say something like inspect, give it a, pa a CSS path to what you want to inspect, and it will bring that right up. Um, you can clear the console and open the console from the command line. Uh, something that I find really interesting, though, is you can resize the browser as well by just saying resize to and give it different dimensions. This is going to be really useful when, say, testing your responsive designs inside of the Firefox browser. And finally, another feature that I really like is the option to have screenshots right from the command line. And you can even give it different IDs of what you want to have screenshots of, and Firefox will save them for you. So pretty interesting developments for developers in the latest beta of Firefox. So check that out if you get the chance. Still need to be testing on Firefox. That's pretty nifty. Next up, just a quick little thing, JS Books, available at jsbooks.revolunet, like revolution, I guess, dot com. And in a previous episode, we covered something pretty similar to this that showed a whole bunch of useful Python books. Well, this is just a list of all the best JavaScript books. 
JavaScript, of course, being the language that creates the behavioral layer in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So pretty nifty if you're looking to learn with books. Of course, if you want to learn about JavaScript on video, you should check out teamtreehouse.com. Shameless self-promotion. Shameless. Uh, next up, just another quick heads up. There is a theme that recently gained popularity. This is a theme for your text editors, and this is called the Tomorrow Theme, and it is pretty without being overbearing. Uh, it, ha it has different configurations for Vim, TextMate, Sublime, whatever you're using these days. There's dark and light versions, and uh, pretty much any editor that has gained popularity recently will have a version of the Tomorrow theme. Very pleasant to look at and easy on the eyes, which is something that you're going to be looking for when you stare at text all day. Very, very true. When you do look at text all day long, you definitely want to have a pretty nice looking theme. It seems like a small thing, but it really does uh, really does affect the way you work. So Jason, what did we learn today? We learned that Firefox is pretty awesome for its developer tools in the latest beta, and that we should all check that out. I would have to agree. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm at NickRP on Twitter. I'm at Jay Cipher. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of The Treehouse Show. For show notes and more, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. This episode was brought to you by Treehouse, the best way to learn web design, web development, mobile, business, and more. You can check us out at teamtreehouse.com. We'll see you next week.